Ευλογητός η Κύριε, διδαξόν με τα δικαιώματά Σου. Ευλογητός η Κύριε, διδαξόν με τα δικαιώματά Σου. Κύριε, κατά πηγή εγενήθης ημίν, εν γενναία και γενναία, εγώ είπα, Κύριε, ελέησον με, ίασε την ψυχή μου, ότι ημαρτώνσι. Κύριε, προσέκατε φυγόν, δίδαξον με του πίν το θέλημά σου, ότι εσύ ο Θεός μου. Ο Θεό, Άγιο Ισχυρό, Άγιο Αθάνατο, Ελέησονημα. Δόξα πατρί και ιό και Άγιο Πνευματί. Και 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 στου αιώνα των αιώνων. Άγιο Αθάνατο, Ελέησον ημά. Άγιο. Ο
For the peace from above, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. <speaking in Hebrew> This holy temple for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Υπέρ του αρχιεπισκόπου και πατρός ημονιακόβου του τιμίου Φρεσδίου της Εγκριστό Διακονίας, παντός του κλήρου και του λαού του Κυρίου, δε ηθόμε. For the President of the United States, for those in civil authority, for the armed forces, for all the American nation, let us pray to the Lord. Υπέρτης Ιεράς Μετροπολέως και Νορνίας των Αυτής και Πάσης, Πόλεως Μονής και Χώρας και των Πιστικούν των Αναπτές του Κυρίου Δαϊθόμεν. For seasonable weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Αγία Σακράντου, υπερευλογημένη σε δόξα τη Μίση Μονθεωτόκου και αή Πόρθων Μαρία, με τα παντών των Αγίων Μνημονέων σε δεσέα του Σκέλιου και πάσαν την ζωή νημών. Χριστό το Θεό παραθωμέθο. Ο 
ότι πρέπει εσύ πάσα δόξα τιμή και προσκυνήσει στο πατρί και το ιό και το αγίο πνεύμα την ίν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αλλάξατε το Κύριο πάσα γη σ' όλα τα παιδί το ονόματι αυτού. Τες πρεσβείες της Θεοτόκους ο τέρσος ον ημάς. Είπατε το Θεός φοβρά τα έργα σου. Τες πρεσβείες της Θεοτόκους ο τέρσος ον ημάς. Άσα η γη προσκύνησα το σάνσι και έψαλα το σάνσι. Τες πρεσβείες της Θεοτόκου, σώτες σώσονι. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Commemorated, O most holy, pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos, the Mother of God and of Virgin Mary, of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. For thine is the dominion, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Ο Αναστάς εκ νεκρών ψάλλοντας η Αλληλουία. Και πεφάνε το πρόσωπον αυτού ευήμας και λέει σε ημάς. Σώσον ημάς η Εθεού, ο Αναστάς εκ νεκρών ψάλλοντας η Αλληλουία. Υπότιτλοι <laughs> Αντιλαβούς όσων ελέγχουν και διαφύλαξουν η μας ο Θεός τη συγχωρείτε. Της Παναγίας Ακράντου υπερβλημένης εντός ο δεσμής ημών Θεοτόκου και αι Παρθένο Μαρίας, 
Met a pandon trium nimonef sent a self to scalilus capos and things so any more. Christo to theo parathometho. Ότι αγαθός και φιλάνθρωπος Θεός υπάρχεις και εσύ την δόξαν να πέμπομεν, το Πατρί και το Υιό και το Άγιο Πνεύμα την ίν και αΐ και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Άμι. Αναστεί το Θεός και διασκορπιστεί τον σαν η εχθροί αυτού, και φυγέντος αν από προσώπου αυτού οι μισούντες αυτού. Χριστός ανέξει εκ μέχρον θανάτων, θανάτων παντήρ. Sophia, Urthi, El Ecclesia se vlogite ton Theon, Kyrion ek pigon Israel, Sos onimasie Theu, O Anastas ek nekro, Oh, 
Pray to the Lord. For though God and holy in thee, we ascribe glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages.
Εν τες ημέρες εκείνας, την τεινών των τρομαθητών, εγένετο ο κογκισμός των ελληνιστών προς τους Εβραίους, ότι παθεωρούντο εν τη διακονία τη καθημερινή εχείρα αυτών. Προσκαλεσάμνη δε οι δώδεκα το πλήθος των μαθητών, είπων, ούκαρες τον έστιν ημάς καταλήψαντας το λόγον του Θεού, διακονήν τραπέζες. Επισκέψασε ούν αδελφοί άνδρας εξ ημών μαρτυρουμέντος επτά, πλήρης Πνεύματος Αγίου και Σοφίας, ους καταστήνωσομεν επί της χρίας ταύτης. Εμείς δε τη προσευχή και τη διακονία του λόγου προσκαρτερίσομεν και ήρισεν ο λόγος ενωπιών πάντως του πλήθους και εξελέξαν το Στέφανον, άνδρα πλήρη πίστεως και Πνεύματος Αγίου και Φιλίππου και πρόχωρον και Νικάνορα και Τίμωνα και Παρμενάν και Νικόλαον προσήλω την Αντιοχία, ως έστησαν ενωπιών των Αποστόλων και προσδευξάμενοι επέφθηκαν αυτής της χείρας. Και ο Λόγος του Θεού ειδήξανε και επληθέντο αριθμός των μαθητών εν Ιερουσαλήμ σφόδρα. Πολύστε όχλος των ιερέων επίκον τη πίστη. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord has chastened me sorely. The reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Wisdom let us attend. In those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, take out from among you seven men of good repute full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a, pro a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the apostles multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Peace be with you, the reader. Σοφία ορθή, ακούσουμε το Αγίου Ευαγγελίου, ειρήνη πάση. Εκ του καταμάρκου να Αγίου Ευαγγελίου το ανάγνωσμα, προσκομέν. Το καιρό εκείνο έλθον Ιωσ, Ιωσήφ από Αριμαθέας ευσκήμων βουλευτής ως και αυτός είναι προσδεχόμενος την Βασιλεία του Θεού τολμήσας εισήλθε προς Πιλάτον και ετήσατο το σώμα του Ιησού ο δε Πιλάτος εθαύμασεν ή ήδη τέθνικε 
και προσκαλεσάμενος των κεντηρίων να επιρώτησαν αυτόν ή πάλι απέθανε. Και γνούς από το κεντηρίων ως εδωρίσατο το σώμα του Ιωσήφ. Και αγοράσα συντόνα και καθαλών, αυτόν ενήλυσε τη συντόνια και κατέθηκεν αυτόν εν νημίου, ον ειν λελατουνημένον εκ πέτρας, και προσεκύλησε λίθον επί την θύραν του νημίου. Είδε Μαρία η Μαγδαληνή και Μαρία η Ιωσή εθεώρουν που τέθηκε. Και διαγενωμένου του Σαββάτου Μαρία η Μαγδαληνή και Μαρία η του Ιακώβου και Σαλόμι εγόρασαν αρώματα, είναι ερθούσε λήψος ειν αυτών. Και λίαν πρωί της μιας Σαββάτων έρχονται επί του μνημείου ανατήλαντος του Λιλίου και έλεγον προς εαυτάς, της αποκυλήσει ημίν των λίθων εκ της θύρας του μνημείου, και να βλέψασε θεωρούσιν ότι αποκεκύλιστε ο λίθος ειν καρ μεγας φόδρα. Και εισελθούσε εις το μνημείο νίδων νεανίσκων καθήμενων εν της δεξιής, περιβεβλημένων στον ειν λευκήν και εξανταβήθησαν. Ο δε λέγει αυτές, μη εκθαμβήστε Ιησούν, ζητείτε των Ναζαρινών των Εσταυρωμένων, εγέρθει ουκ έστιν ο δε είδε τόπος όπου έθηκαν αυτών. Αλυπάγεται, είπατε, τις μαθητές αυτού και το Πέτρο, ότι προάγει μας εις την Γαλιλαίαν, εκεί αυτόν όψεστε, καθώς είπεν ημίν. Και εξελθούσε έφυγον από το μνημείο, Είχε δε αυτάς τρόμος και έκστασης, και ουδενή ουδεν είπων εφοβούν το God. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Let us be attentive. At that time, Joseph of Arimathea a respected member of the council, who also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene the Mary, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when they went to the tomb, when the sun had risen, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was already rolled back. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed, for you seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. But see the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you so. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Grant that being ever protected by thy power to thee, we may ascribe glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages.
Sevon Georgodoxon Christianon. Nisni Kinios Oteos, in the Basilia of the Pando de Ninkeai, Christus Eunas, Ton Eunon. Here presented, let us pray to the Lord. and peaceful and for a good account at the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Sin the Panagio, Kagatokis of Biosup Nevmat in Inkei, Kays to say, O Naston, O no. Sophia Proskomen. Mister 
Εγώ είσαι ένα Θεό, πατέρα παντοστράτο. Φυγητή του ρανού και γη, ορατώνται πάντων και αγράτων. Και ει ένα κύριο και ει τον Χριστό, τον ιό του Θεού, τον Μονογενή, τον εκπατρό και ενημερώνει από το πάντων των αιών. Πώ εκπατρό, Υπότιτλοι <Σιναι> και να στάντα την πληγή ημέρα κατασκευάς. Ελευθόντα εις τους ουρανούς και κατεζόμενο εκ εξιών του Πατρός και πάλι ελευθόμενο με τα δόξης κρίνε ζώνας και ρεκρούς που της βασιλείου ξετέλος. Τέλος. Και στο πνεύμα το Άγιο των Κύριων των Τζοπιών το εκ του Πατρός εκπαιρευόμενο το συμπατρί και ο Υιός του προσκυνούμενο και συνδοξαζόμενο το λαλίσαν διά των προφητών της μίαν Αγία, Καθολικήν και Αποστολικήν Εκκλησία, ομολογώ εν βάπτισμα εις άφησιν αματιών, στον ζωχό Ανάστασιν νεκρό και ζωήν του μέλλοντος αιώνος. Αμήν. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us and man for all salvation came down from the heavens and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man, and crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, rising on the third day according to the scriptures and the descending into the heavens, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and coming in with glory to judge the living and the dead, his kingdom shall have no end. And then the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I accept one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and life in the ages to come. Amen. Stomen kalos, stomen medavobu, proskomen dinayian anaforon, enerini prosferin. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Let us give thanks unto the Lord. To the Piniki on him, no, 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 Surrender himself for the life of the world, 
having taken bread in his holy and immaculate and blameless hands and thanked and blessed and sanctified and broken it he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles saying Thank ye, this is my body, which for you is broken unto remission of sins. Drink from it, ye all. This is my blood of the New Testament, which for you and for many is shed unto remission of sin. Therefore, remembering the command of our Savior and all that he endured for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the third day, the ascension into heaven, the city at the right hand, the second in glory is coming again. Again, we offer to thee this rational and bloodless worship. And we beseech thee and pray and supplicate thee, send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. Make this bread the precious body of thy Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ, changing them by the descent of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. so that they may be to those who receive them for the purification of the soul, for the remission of sins, for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, and for the boldness to approach thee neither unto judgment nor unto condemnation. Again, we offer unto thee this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Παναγία Σαχράν του υπερευλογημένη εν δόξου δεσμίση μον Θεό τόκου και αι Παρθένου Μαρία. Christ, 
all the priestly and monastic orders further we offer thee this reason of worship for those for the world, for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, for those living in purity and temperance, for our faithful civil authorities, grant them, O Lord, peaceful government, and in tranquility may live serene life in piety and all temperance. Πρώτης μυστητή Κύριε το Αρχιεπισκόπου και Πατρός ημονία κόβου αν χάρισε της Αγίας Εκκλησίας εν ειρήνη σον εν ημονιά μη κμερεύοντα και ορθώ του μόντα των λόγων της εις αληθείας και ον έκαστος κατά διάνια νέχη και πάντων και πασόν. Grant us that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now endeavoring unto the ages of ages. Amen. In the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be Holy and celestial and invisible altar unto a scent of spiritual fragrance. May send down upon us divine grace, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. In an audit of this peace, the Oskidding in Runia, the one you have never had to set the Samini of Tuskia, the Ruske Pass, and Tinsu in Imon, Christo to the Aparathometho. Δέσποτε με την Παρισία σαν κατακρίτω στο όλμαν επικαλείστε σε τον Απουράνιον Θεόν Πατέρα και λέγει. Πάτε λοιπόν, ο εν της ουρανής αγιαστεί το τ' όνομά σου, έλθε το η βασιλεία σου, γεννηθεί το το θέλημά σου, ως εν ουρανό και επί της γης, στον άρτον ημών των επίουσιων, δώσ' μην σήμερον, και άφησε η μήν τα αφηλήματα ημών, ως και εμείς αφήμεν σε φελέτς ημών, και εμείς δεν έγιες ημάς πειρασμών, αλλά ρίσε ημάς από το πονηρού. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. and love for mankind of thine only begotten Son with whom thou art blessed together with thine all holy good and life giving spirit now endeavor and unto the ages of ages
the unworthy, wherefore do thou cleanse the burn for stain. Receive us today, O Son of God, as partake of the mystical feast. Do not speak the mystery to thine enemies, do not kiss the Judas, but as a thief of Christ, remember the comes to the kingdom. Προσέρθετε. Amen. 
Με το λαμβάνει η δούλη του Θεού, Μαρία εις αυσμαρτιών και ζουήν ιονιών αμήν. Με το λαμβάνει η δούλη του Θεού, ειρήνη εις αυσμαρτιών και ζουήν ιονιών αμήν. Servant of God, the mission of our sins, of our life everlasting. Servant of God. Even for the remission of his sins of her life everlasting. And the man you do lose to the room, the evangelos, self is a martyon, his win, union, amen. The man you do lose to the room, the man dear, self is a martyon, his win, union, amen. Servant of God, the remission of her sins of her life everlasting. Servant of God, Sophia is commune for the remission of her sins of her life everlasting. The servant of God, Sophia is commune for the remission of her sins of her life everlasting. Servant of God, Sophia is commune for the remission of her sins of her life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God. Με το λαμβάνει ο δούλο του Θεού. Σάφη σε μαρτιών και ζουίν ιωνιών. Αμήν. Servant of God, Eleni, is commune for the mission of her sins and for life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God, Constantinos, is commune for the mission of her sins and for life everlasting. The servant of God. Yerasimus is communed for the remission of his sins and for life everlasting. So, son of the host of Mount Sukeva, you saw the inclined of me and so. Let us rise, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, mortal, and heavenly life given in awesome mysteries of Christ. Worthily, let us give thanks unto the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Have we asked the Lord that this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless? Let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Το πατρί και το Υιό και το Άγιο Πνεύμα την ίν και Άι και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Εν ειρήνη προέρθουμεν του Κυρίου Δαϊθόμεν. Κύλεσον, 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 Πατέρα Ιε, Ευρώ. 
Lord, bless those and bless thee and sanctify those who put their trust in thee. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Protect the whole body of thy church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of thy temple. Do thou glorify them by the divine power and forsake not us who set our hope in thee. Grant peace to the world, to the churches, to the priests, to the civil authorities, to the armed forces, and to all thy people. For all good giving and every perfect gift is from above coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And to thee we ascribe glory and thanksgiving and worship to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now endeavor unto the ages of ages. Son into the Holy Spirit, the tri brilliance of the God at singleness, let us praise reverently chanting. Holy are you, the beginningless Father, co beginningless Son and Holy Spirit, shine upon us who in faith worship you and deliver our soul from the eternal fire. Υπάρχει σαν 
are not to Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You are God who descended into Hades and end the suffering of all who are in prison. O Savior, also rest the souls of these your servants. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray that you hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the souls of the servants of God, Elaine, young Eliki, Athanasios, who have fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all their heirs, both voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord God will place their souls where the righteous rest to grant to their mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins, let us ask of Christ, our mortal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death, crushed the power of the devil, and granted life to your world, do you yourself, O Lord, give rest to the souls of these, your servants, Elaine, young and Athanasius, who have fallen asleep, in a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of repose, where there is no grief, sorrow, or mourning. Forgive every sin which they have committed in word or deed or thought, for you are a good God who loves mankind. For there is no one who lives and does not sin, only you are without sin, your righteousness and everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. Everlasting be your memory, who are worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Eonia Again, we pray for all the devout and Orthodox Christians. Edi Damathai per tu nef sevon ke orthodox on Christianon. Eleison, Kyrie, Eleison, Kyrie, Eleison. 
Αγίτη Διαμαθά υπέρ του Αρχιεπισκόπου και Πατρός ημών Ιακώβου και πάσε Χριστό ημών αδελφό Τιτό. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, self-keeping, the protection, the pardon and remission of sins of the servants of God and all the devout and orthodox Christians who dwell or sojourn in this city, to the parishioners of this parish, the parish council, the contributors, supporters, benefactors of this holy church, and also to the members of the order of Ahepo. Further, we pray for that this holy church in this city and every land and city will be kept safe against violence and pestilence, famine and earthquake, flood and fire against the sword and invasion of enemies, civil strife and sudden death, that our good and loving God will be merciful and gracious and open to be entreated to turn back all the violence and evil aroused against us, deliver us from his impending righteous chastisement and be merciful to us. Έτι δε μαθα υπέρ του εισακούσε Κύριον των Θεών ημών, φωνής της δέησεως ημών των αμαρτωλών και λαείς αημάς. Hear us, O God, the Redeemer, the hope of all at the ends of earth, or far away, and show mercy, show mercy, O Master, toward our sins, and have mercy on us. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we ascribe glory, to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now endeavoring unto the ages of ages. Amen. Most merciful Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, through the intercessions of his most pure Lady and Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the prayers of the venerable and glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, of the holy, glorious, praiseworthy, and paramount among the apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the holy apostles, for our holy God-bearing fathers of our fathers among the saints, the great hierarchs and ecumenical teachers, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom. Of our fathers among the saints, Athanasius and Cyril and John the Almsgiver, patriarchs of Alexandria, of St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra of Lycia, St. Spiridon of Trimitheus, and Nectarius of Pendepolios, the wonder worker, of the holy glorious martyrs, George the Victorious, Demetrius the Exhaler of Myrrh, Theodore of Tyre, and Theodore the General, and Minas the wonder worker of the priests, martyrs, Caralambos and Eleftherios, of the holy glorious great women martyrs, Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kiriaki, Fotigny, Marina, Pariskivi, and Irene, of our venerable and godly ascetic fathers, of the holy and right sisters Joachim and Anna, and all the saints, Efs Brodect on peace on tin they sin imon. Doris I mean tin office in don for up to matun imon. Skepas on imas and discapit on tirigon so. Apodiox on afimon panda ekthron kepolemion. Irine psoni montin zoin kini elei psoni mas ke don kosmon su ke sos on das psikasimon os agathos ke filantropos ke lei mon theo.
us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, you blessed the five loaves in the wilderness and fed from them 5,000 people. Will you likewise now bless these loaves, the wheat, the wine, and the oil, and multiply them in this city and parish and in all your world? Bless your faithful servants who will partake of them, for you bless and sanctify all things Christ our God. And to you we offer up glory and to your Father who is from everlasting and your all holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now endeavoring unto the ages of ages. Amen. Ευλογία Κύριο και έλεος αυτού θυμάστη αυτού θεία χάρη και φαλανθρωπία πάντοτε νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Δόξα Σύ ο Θεός, η επίσημον Κύριε Δόξα Σύ. Δόξα Πατρί και Υιό και Αγίο Πνεύματι και νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων αμήν. Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε Λέησον, Πάτερ Άγιε Ευλόγησον. Ο Αναστάς εκ νεκρών Χριστός, ο αληθινός Θεός ημών, τες πρεσβείας της Παναχράντου και πραμμόμα Αγίας ο Φτου Μητρός, δυνάμει του Τιμίου και Εζώπιου Σταυρού, προστασία του Τιμίου Πρανίου, δυνάμινου σωμάτων, ηγεσία του Τιμίου ενδόξου προφήτου, προδρόμου και βαπτιστού Ιωάννου. Πατέρων του Αγίου εν Αγίης Πατρός ημών Ιωάννου Αρχιεπισκόπου κον του Νεοπόλεως του Σωστόμου, τον Αγίον Οδόξη Καλληνίκου Μαρτύρων των Οσίγων Θεοφόρων Πατέρων ημών, τον Αγίον και Δικαίων Θεοπατέρων Ιωακήμ και Άγιης, τον Αγίον Πατρικίου Ιερομάρτυρος Μενάνδρου και Φιλετέρου των Μαρτύρων και πάντων των Αγίων Ελής και σώσε εμάς ως αγαθός και φιλάνθρωπος και λαίμον Θεός. Χριστός Ανέστη. Δόξα τη αυτού τριημέρου εγέρση. Χριστός Ανέστη εκ νεκρών θανάτω θανάτων πατήσας και
This past week, Our Lady's Philoptical Society had their elections for their new board, and their board is comprised of a number of, of ladies. I believe the number is 17, many of them who are here today, and they will be taking their oath of office. So I would like the, uh, the newly elected board to come forward so that they can be sworn in, and then at some point, uh, in the near future, either today or in the near future, they will select their officers for the terms 2014 and 2015. So I ask that the ladies come forward and circle, make a half circle in front of the altar, and uh, you'll be placing your hand on the Bible, and we will give the oath of office. Oh, not good. The past two years, we've, or the past four years actually, two terms we have had Nancy Pilavas um, serve as its president. So, uh, on behalf of our members of the parish council and certainly the clergy and all of our parish, we are grateful to uh, Nancy and her executive board and to the board in general for their hard work, for the work that they do, the uh, uh, the the diligent work that they do for the parish and for the ministries and certainly for the many um, uh, endeavors that they, that they do within the parish as well as outside of the parish. So at this time I'll ask you to place your hands on the gospel as Father Athanasius is holding it and uh, you'll just repeat after me. If you, if you can't reach the gospel, just place your hand on the shoulder of someone. <laughs> and the power will go through to the next person in back. I do solemnly affirm that I will uphold the dogma, teaching, traditions, holy canons, worship, and moral principles of the Greek Orthodox Church, as well as the Constitutional Charter Discipline and, regulations Discipline and regulations of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, and that I will fulfill faithfully and sincerely the duties and obligations, the duties and obligations required of the Board of Directors of the, Board of Directors of the Philoptikos Society so help me God. Okay, Father, lift the gospel up so that they can each kiss the gospel. We congratulate you on your election, and uh, we look forward to the next two years.
Christ is risen. Today, as well as you as you noticed, there was an autoclasia service, and traditionally, the Archdiocese of America always designates, I believe, this time of the year for the uh, the health and the work of the another organization, which is an extension. Uh, of the church, not directly under the church, but certainly an extension of the church, um, the order of Ahepa. So uh, today's Artoclesia was for one of the local chapters um, here in our um, Panagia community for the organization of Ahepa. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Before we go down for the uh, coffee fellowship hour this morning and uh, the Sunday school uh, awards that is taking place today as today is their final day and the end of the school, the school term, their Sunday school, Sunday church school term uh, where they will be having their program downstairs in Plato Hall. As we leave the events of the week of passion and the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the world at that time was in a turmoil. The apostles were faced with the task of picking up the pieces and reassembling this ministry that Christ had entrusted them with. And in the New Testament book of Acts, and the other epistles that are found in the New Testament Bible, we are given accounts of how the apostles went about that task of building the fledgling Christian church in an environment that was anything but friendly. Now, I know we all have heard of St. Paul the Apostle. And we read and we hear and see how his great faith and works literally molded the early Christian communities, and how his instruction and his great leadership led to the advances of Christianity throughout the world in the decades following the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But how many of us actually know about St. Paul? How many of us actually know that it was not that way from the very beginning? St. Paul was not always a saint. In fact, early on, he was one of the greatest persecutors of Christians and sought to have as many put to death as he possibly could. But the Lord saw something special in St. Paul, who was known by that by the name Saul, not Paul. He was known by the name of Saul in his days. But God saw in the Apostle Paul a certain kind of authority. And God decided that he wanted to use St. Paul for the advancement of his church here on earth. Think how often we hear about St. Paul. How closely we study his words in our church services today. The epistle readings that are read by our chanters each and every Sunday. Practically all of them are the writings of St. Paul. Do you know that most of the books of the New Testament were actually written by St. Paul? But as I said, there was a time, however, when he had a different kind of authority. An authority that sent chills down the spines of Christian believers. Before his conversion to Christianity, Paul, or should I say Saul, was a man to be feared, especially if you were a Christian. Saul seemed to take special delight in persecuting the followers of Jesus. This was because of his fierce devotion to the faith in which he was nurtured. You see, Saul was Jewish. He called himself a Hebrew among Hebrews so fervent in the faith and traditions of his own people that he stood by and he held the coats and the belongings of the mob that dragged Stephen off and stoned him to death. 
Stephen was the first saint of our Christian church. And St. Paul gave a helping hand to his murder. And what was St. Stephen's crime? He gave up his life for preaching the good name of Jesus Christ. Later on, Saul had risen to such prominence and respect in his own people that he had the green light to be able to go in and see any high priest he wanted and receive from them letters that gave him the authority to persecute and to arrest any Christian that he wanted and he came across. Saul was a big, self-righteous man with a big, ambitious plan. And he probably felt very special, very important, as he rode along tall in the saddle on his way to Damascus one day. But something special happened on that road to Damascus. And we find it in the book of Acts, where St. Luke is the author of that book. And he describes the situation like this. As Saul neared Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul said, who are you? And the voice replied back and he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Now the men that were traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. And Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So the men who were with him took him by the hand, and they led him into the city of Damascus. And St. Luke goes on in his book of Acts and tells us that for three days Saul was blind and did not eat or drink anything. But then Saul experienced the love of God. And this love came through an ordinary Christian disciple living in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord instructed Ananias to go to a house where Saul was, saying, Go to this man, for I have chosen him as my instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Now Ananias knew that Saul was a murderer. And he was reluctant in the beginning, but he did as the Lord asked him to do. And Ananias went to the house where Saul was staying at, and placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he immediately was able to see once again. And Saul got up, and he was baptized into the very faith that he had set out to destroy. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. And then St. Luke adds these very descriptive words in the book of Acts. He says, Saul, who then took the name Paul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And at once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus truly is the Son of God. My dear brothers and sisters, we witnessed a few weeks back the world-changing event of the resurrection of our Lord. Do we still believe it? Our churches throughout the world were filled And today they're not. So the question we ask, do we still believe it? How close do we embrace that belief in the resurrection? What does it mean for each of us as a baptized Orthodox Christian? For St. Paul, it was the life-changing transformation that I just described. And he shouted out, St. Paul shouted out and he said, I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. 
So Saul, the ambitious man with big giant plans, had an experience that brought him literally to his knees. And he realized that this whole life, his whole life had been one big mistake. And through the touch of an ordinary man named Ananias, Saul's life has radically changed and he became an apostle of Jesus, whose followers, followers he had persecuted for so many years before. And here's what I find fascinating, however. Sometime after his experience in Damascus, Saul changed his name, as I said, to Paul. Now, does anyone know why? Why did he change his name from Saul to Paul? And what's fascinating about that? Well, Saul is a Hebrew name. And it literally means asked for or prayed for. And you'll remember that the people of ancient Israel asked God for a king to come and save them. And so God gave them a king. And yes, that king's name was Saul. And undoubtedly Saul's parents named this child after the first king of Israel since they were both part of the tribe of Benjamin. But that king Saul was not an honest man. And he was a major disappointment to the Jews. He was driven by his ego and he became desperate to maintain his position. So the New Testament Saul, the saint who we have, become, have come to love as the great protector of the Christian church, he either chose the name Paul or he was given the name Paul. But this is what is fascinating. Paul in Latin literally means small, as in tiny, little, insignificant. And it is interesting that the apostle chose to identify himself this way, as a small person. The once big man, the man who prided himself in murdering Christians, chose to identify himself after his conversion as small. St. Paul wanted people to know that he was not the same man he had been before. In fact, later on, he would go out of his way to tell anyone and everyone and constant, constantly refer to himself as the least of the apostles. Sometimes, as adults, even Christian adults, who are parents or bosses or leaders in our churches or communities, we can let a little bit of authority or power or success go to our heads. We may think that because we are used to making decisions, that we are somehow in charge of our lives, running things. And we may forget that every job we do, every dollar we earn, every step we take, and every breath we draw is all by the grace of God. A person may be anointed and commissioned to do a task for God, but if he or she ever forgets that it is God who empowers us and that it is God to whom we should look to direct our steps, we run the risk of getting derailed and falling off track. Prior to his conversion, Saul thought he knew everything. He thought he knew what he was doing. He believed he was serving the God of Israel by carrying out his own hate-filled agenda against the Christians. Saul thought he knew everything he needed to know about God. But he had no idea that God had revealed so much more through Jesus of Nazareth. Saul thought he had power and authority. But God took away his autonomy and independence and literally knocked him off his horse and blinded him in order that he might see more than he had ever seen before. Saul was forced to recognize that not only the true Jesus, but also the truth about his own actions. Instead of serving God, he was persecuting God's only son. And now upon realizing that Jesus is the Lord, 
the one with true power and authority over everything, Saul was humbled to the point where he could become a magnificent ambassador for Christ. Finally, my dear friends, a few weeks back, we all witnessed the miracle of the resurrection. And we have been left with the greatness of Jesus' apostles, led by the greatest orator of them all, St. Paul. Prior to his conversion, Saul had a reputation, but he received a revelation, a revelation about himself and about a revelation of God in Jesus Christ. And from that day forward, St. Paul subjected his reputation and his authority to the will and glory of Jesus Christ. And the same thing can be true for us. Until we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Christ, each of us finds ourselves traveling a dangerous, difficult road. Until we yield ourselves to God's leadership, we live in lives puffed up with an inflated ego and a sense of our own authority or power, warped by our own selfishness and self-importance. Even though we believe we mean well, or we see ourselves as good people, until we enter into a living relationship with Jesus, until the Lord introduces Himself to us and enters to live and love through us, then we will be just like Saul was. So Saul, who is now Paul, St. Paul, the saint that we've come to love, he was called to give testimony and witness for Jesus Christ. And our church asks us, what will our testimony be? Saul was a big man. He was a big man with big plans. But he was an angry man who took out his anger on others. And it took Jesus Christ to humble him and to give him a new name, Paul. A name that means, as I said, small. Ironically, after becoming small, after becoming the least of the apostles... St. Paul became the second most influential man who ever lived, according to the Orthodox Church, after Christ himself. St. Paul was not an apostle. He was not the one of the original twelve. But he is the greatest among all after Christ. After his blinding experience on the road to Damascus, he became a man who could see the purposes of God so clearly Why? Because he became God's instrument. He didn't tell God what to do. God instructed him what to do. And God makes that same request of us. He asks us to humble ourselves, to follow his path, and to believe the gospel. Amen.